Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans deals with the crime of passion. He calls it the Flaming Circle. In the cool of an early Florida morning, a 10-meter motor launch slipped its moorings and headed out of the harbor. It turned south and towards the string of small islands known as Arline Keys. The sea was calm, and there was a promise of a warm day to come. Steering the launch was Sam Godwin, a very wealthy young Englishman who had gained the reputation locally of a carefree playboy. The fact that Sam had worked like a slave for 15 years and had a business sense that bordered on genius tended to be ignored by his critics. He'd sold out at the age of 35 and was now determined to live life to its fullest while there was plenty of time left to do so. Two days previously, he'd been acquitted of a first-degree murder charge through lack of material evidence, and this fishing trip to Arline Keys was intended to help him forget this traumatic experience. Accompanying him was Tina Lindley, his girlfriend, credited to be one of the most beautiful girls in the American South, and she'd won a dozen or more beauty competitions to prove it. Sounds idyllic, doesn't it? But it wasn't. That fishing trip turned out to be the most terrifying experience of Sam Godwin's life. a little, Sam. It's over now. You can forget about it. Oh, I'm doing my best, Tina. Oh, when I've fished in a few big ones, I'll feel better. How long will it take to get there? Oh, about two hours, I'd say. Why go so far? I've heard the fishing's good just off the shore. Oh, I just feel like getting away from town a long way. And besides, the fishing at our line Keys is the best on the coast. <laughs> hey, you're not having second thoughts about spending 24 hours alone with an eligible bachelor like me, are you? <laughs> not in the least. 24 days wouldn't worry me. The longer, the better. <laughs> That's my girl. I'll be an angel and pour me some tea from the urn, would you? Sure thing. You know, I can't stop thinking about who would want to kill Sue Merrick. She was a harmless girl, even though she did make a nuisance of herself at times. Oh, she was making a play for you like you were the last man on the planet. It was really because of you that she left her husband. Yeah, so the district attorney kept repeating at the trial. I didn't encourage Susan, though, you know. I spent most of my time avoiding her towards the end. Not a very convincing argument, since you were the one who found her day at that night in her apartment. Oh, damn it all, Tina. Do you think I'd have been fool enough to call the police if I were the culprit? No. Nobody saw me go in, and I... I could have just as easily walked away with nobody being any the wiser. Easy now, Sam. Don't get the wrong idea. I'm as sure as you are that you had nothing to do with Sue Merrick's murder. <sighs> but it's odd why she telephoned me to drive over and see her. It must have been only minutes before I arrived that she was killed. Oh, her poor husband, August. He was so shattered by it all. Yeah, I'm sure he was. And completely convinced that I murdered her. August had it in for me from the day Sue walked out on him. But he only had himself to blame, you know. Happens all the time when an elderly man marries a virile young woman like Sue. Oh, Sam, it's such a depressing subject. Try to forget about it, darling. Yeah, all right. I'll do my best. Here, you take over the wheel for a spell. Just keep steering her south-southeast. Right on. Godwin's estimate of their time of arrival off the bare rocky islands was dead correct. He turned east to a fishing spot he knew some eight miles offshore, where he dropped the launch's speed down to five knots and carefully eyed the game fishing grounds. Tina, 
What is it, honey? Be a good girl and pass me that box from under the seat you're lying on. Which? Oh, this long wooden one? Yes, that's it. Bring it up here. What's inside it? Oh, nothing special. It's, um, where I keep most of my fishing tackle. Oh. I checked it over yesterday afternoon and I got it ready for this trip. There's everything inside to catch the big ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a gorgeous day. I think I'll just cut the engine and we can drift. Hmm? You're right, Sam. It's one of the nicest days we've had this month. I'm tempted to take a dip over the side. Oh, well, don't even try it. The sharks here are big enough to swallow you whole without even noticing. Well, I'll take your word for it. Seems a great pity, though. Hmm. Well, now, what shall I go for? Hmm? A nice big blue marlin or a... Hey, what's this? I'm sure it wasn't here yesterday afternoon. Well, it's only an envelope. Yes, I can see that. But how did it get in here? It's addressed to me. It's a damn strange way of delivering mail, I must say. Not easy to read. It's... Hey, what is this? Some kind of a sick joke? Oh, excuse me reading over your shoulder, but... Why would August Merrick be writing to you, of all people? I always knew he was a bit peculiar. He says I'm to tune in my ship-to-shore radio to 1515 killer cycles at 10.30, precisely. What for, I wonder? Oh, he's a nutcase. Why should I bother? He's caused me enough hassles already. Oh, it wouldn't hurt to listen in. I'm curious, and it could be important. Yeah, it made me curious, too. At a guess, I'd say he wants to call me a lot of nasty names. Let's see, it's some 10.20 now. That's 10 minutes to wait. Well, he timed it perfectly, as though he knew exactly when you'd open that box. Well, I made no secret of where I was going. Just about everyone in the harbor must have seen me pottering about there yesterday. Uh, the old codger must have waited for me to leave and then come on board and stuck his note in the box. Well, come on, let's go into the cabin and tune into what the idiot has to say. Not a peep out of him, and it's gone 25 to 11 already. Well, we're quite far away. Is his radio as good as yours? It's better. He's a radio ham. That's the old boy's hobby. Well, maybe he's just trying to bug you. Yeah, well, I'm beginning to think so. I have a good mind to ignore him and get on with the fishing. Give him a few more minutes, honey. All kinds of things might have delayed him. You know, I think I'll take a cruise for a few weeks and uh, get him off my back. <laughs> Old August is just the type to dedicate the rest of his life to bombarding me with poison pen letters and anonymous phone calls. It would make him feel he's getting even with me in some way. Oh, I wouldn't take him too seriously, Sam. He's quite harmless, really. Yeah? In a few months, he'll have gotten over Sue's death and found somebody else that interests him. You were acquitted of killing her and there's nothing he can do to harm you. Is it your fault if his wife takes an unwanted infatuation to you? Oh, I don't think he sees it in quite the same way, unfortunately. Oh, oh. Hey, that's him. Where is he? I'm calling Seafoam. Can you read me? Come in, Seafoam. A Seafoam answering. Reading you loud and clear. What do you want, August? Hello, Godwin. You enjoying your fishing? I haven't had a chance to start yet, thanks to your cryptic message. Uh, and why are you going to so much trouble to ask me a damn fool question like that? Over. You had better catch something worthwhile before it is too late. What does he mean by that crack, Sam? Speak your mind, August. What the hell do you mean? Enjoy yourself for the few minutes you have left. Twenty-two of them, to be precise. Over. Well, uh, look, are you trying to say that you've... That you've boobied seafoam? That you've put a bomb on board? A wonderful guess, Godwin. Top marks for comprehension. I don't believe it. There's a charge there big enough to blow you all the way back to town. <gasps> You're crazy, August. I didn't kill Sue. You must believe that. You did kill her, Godwin. I shall always believe it. But it makes no difference. Nothing can stop the big bang now. You 
are already a dead man, Godwin. Sam, you must get him to tell you where it is. Shh, hold on, Tina. I'm doing my best. If you are thinking of using your inflatable dinghy, don't. It has more holes in it than a sieve. What? And there are far too many sharks that are like keys to risk swimming. <laughs> Better to depart this life in one big bang than by the teeth of a shark, huh? <laughs> Look, August. You have to be joking about this. You're just trying to give me a bad scare. That's right, isn't it? Hmm? It is no joke, Godwin. The charge is set for 11. But I would like to hear your confession before I switch off. Over. No. No, no, don't switch off, please. Uh, so you will confess? No, of course I won't. There's nothing to confess. Please try to believe that, August. Somebody else killed Sue. I swear it wasn't me. Very well, Godwin. Goodbye. No. Over I... and out. He's crazy, Sam. Don't let him go off like that. I can't stop him from switching off. August, are you still listening? August! Sam. Damn. He's gone. Oh, Sam. Um, I'd like to bet he'll come back on before 11, just to gloat. Well, what are we going to do? I don't know. Let me think this through. There's 18 minutes left, Sam. I know. He could still be bluffing, but I doubt it. He's too bitter to make jokes like this. Here, let me try to inflate the rubber dinghy. Right. Here it is. Now, if I can just pull this cord to inflate it... Bluffing, Sam. It's inflating. No, no. No, it isn't. The air's escaping from a dozen or more puncture holes. Look at them. <sighs> Blast the man. We wouldn't get more than a hundred yards in this thing. Well, the life preservers? Life preservers? Well, all they'll do is make you dangle on the surface like shark bait. Now, look, Tina. I want you to start searching this boat from stem to stern. Right. If you see anything suspicious, call me. Don't touch it. And search systematically. And what will you be doing meantime, sunbathing? You can cut out the sarcasm. There's just an outside chance we can reach the nearest island before the deadline. At the same time, I'll call up Jim Harmsworth of the Harbor Police. Now move it, Tina. Right. The minutes are ticking by. Harbor Control, do you read me? Harbor Control, are you there, Jim? This is Seafoam calling Harbor Control. Do you read me? I am not clear. How's the fishing, Sam? Uh, forget the fishing and listen closely to what I'm telling you. That nut, August Merrick, has planted an explosive device on board, and it's due to detonate at 11. Is there a boat nearby you can send to pick us up? Are you being serious, Sam? I mean... I'm dead serious. Can you do something? Well, okay. Uh, I'll see what I can do. What's your position? We're eight miles due east of Arline Key, and I'm heading straight in. The trouble is the reefs. Yeah. Well, don't risk it unless you're planning on feeding the sharks. What about your life raft? Forget it. It's been sabotaged. Well, you best stay where you are. I'll see if I can get a boat to you. Meanwhile, I'll contact the city police and get the pick up Merrick. Right. Maybe you can tell us how to defuse the explosive. Where is it, you know? I've got Tina Lindley with me. She's checking the boat over now. All right. Well, stay on this channel, Sam, and I'll do all I can. Look. Thanks, Jim. But there's not much time left. Over and out. What are you stopping for? We could never make it in time. And if there are any other boats on the fishing grounds, well, we'd be heading away from them. You haven't found anything? I've looked everywhere. Well, then, that means there's only one place left. Under or around the engine. I looked there. Harbor control, see. Come in, see. That'll be Jim with some news for us. <clears throat> Hello, Jim. What have you got? Over. We just got a fix on Glory Bay. She's heading full blast your way. Oh, boy, that's a relief. What? Sam. Well, then all they'll find then is wreckage. Uh, there's something else, Sam. When I called the city police, 
They just got in a report from a patrol car. They just answered the call from Merrick's house. They found him okay. Dangling from a rope in his garage. He was dead. If I didn't know better, I'd say there's no explosive. But there is somewhere. After two complete searches, there can't be. There is one other place, but I've been desperately hoping we wouldn't have to look there. The hull. But how could he put a bomb down there? Easy. A limpet mine attached to the outside of the hull by a suction cup. Oh. Yeah, I'll bet that's what he's done. Now I come to think about it, I remember that August used to do a fair amount of skin diving in the harbor. Well, I'll go over the side and see. I was the best underwater swimmer at school. Uh, uh, August took that possibility into consideration. Sharks, remember? There must be a dozen of them circling the boat at this very moment. We've less than 12 minutes left, Sam. I'm willing to risk it rather than sit here and do nothing. You're quite a girl, Tina, but I can't let you do it. I can be in and out again before the sharks can aim at me. I said no, so put those clothes back on again. I've got to do it. Tina, don't do it. No, the crazy girl. She doesn't stand a chance. Sam helplessly stared over the side. He could see her slim shape in the clear water as she swam along the hull, and it seemed like an eternity before she returned to the surface. At the same time, two black, shiny fins, which had been cutting the water some 30 feet away, increased speed before dipping below the surface. Hurry, Tina, for heaven's sake! Here, give me a hand, quickly! Uh, That's it! Uh, there we go! There! Oh. oh, boy, that was close. Never mind. I saw it, the bomb. What did it look like? Like a dome with a screw clamp over it. What do you mean, a screw clamp? Well, a, a bracket attached to the hull with a handle. Sounds like a limpet mine to me. I don't know where I'll just How it. can it be taken off the hull? Well, the handle has to be turned to relieve the suction. I'll go down again and do it. Oh, no, you don't. Not this time. Let go of me, Sam. It's got to be done, and now... Now, listen, will you just stop a minute and give me a chance to think? Well, there's no time. Eight minutes. I have the glimmer of an idea. Heaven knows if it'll work, though. What will work? Petrol. Gasoline floats, doesn't it? Well, sure. I have a 30-gallon tank of it here. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, if I pour petrol over the side all around the boat and I light it, perhaps it might scare off the sharks. Oh. Sea foam has a steel hull, you see, so the flames will only damage the paintwork. It's worth a try. Okay, so do it, Sam. Maybe I'll feel like one of those circus animals that jumps through a blazing hoop. You won't, because I'm doing the diving this time. You're a lousy swimmer, Sam. And the way you smoke, you'll never hold your breath for long enough. No. Uh, look, let me show you how to pour the fuel and light it. I'm doing the diving. I owe it to you. What do you mean, Tina? You don't owe me a thing. Better get moving that petrol because I'm going. Tina, come back! Don't come any closer, Sam, or I'll jump anyway. Now hurry, please. You amaze me, Tina. Suddenly you're like a totally different person. Not all women go to pieces in a stress situation, and this is my response to it. How long do you think the gasoline will burn? About five minutes before it disperses, or we drift out of it. Well, that's long enough. Come on. Now, listen. When you get down there, turn the handle clockwise, right. all right? It'll be stiff. But as soon as it turns, the mine will fall away and sink. <laughs> and that's when you'll see me surface like a bat out of hell. Yeah, right. There we go. I just soak these two pieces of my shirt in petrol. And then light them. You ready, Tina? Whenever you are. Well, just play that it works. Here goes. Jump! Tina went straight to the limpet mine and took a firm grip of the handle. It was tight. Very tight. As she strained, Tina glanced down and to one side. Two large sharks moved slowly through the water. Sam Godwin's flames may have driven them from the surface, but only to drive them under to where they were an even greater menace. She tried to take her mind off them while she strained desperately to turn the handle. Meanwhile, in the boat, conditions had become almost intolerable. The circle of flames raised the temperature to near roasting level. 
and Sam sought refuge in a corner of the cabin, while outside all the combustible fittings caught a light. Then suddenly the flames flickered and were gone, and a faint cool breeze swiftly lowered the temperature. With his skin tingling and wet with perspiration, Sam apprehensively looked over the side, almost burning himself on the still hot rail. To his horror, he saw a menacing dark shape turn belly up and race for Tina, who was in the act of surfacing. He friendly leant over the rail to grasp her hands as they broke the surface. Tina, quickly! I've got you! <coughs> Tina, no! Oh, no, not that! As he held her hands, he felt the sharp jerk as she was nearly wrenched from his grasp. Then Tina went limp. Exerting almost superhuman strength, he pulled her over the side and into the boat. Stooping beside her, he gazed with horror at the mutilated, once beautiful body. Tina! Tina, darling, what, what can I do to, to help you? Uh, Tina, can, can you hear me? Uh, Tina, Tina. It, it's all right, Sam. I got it off. The bomb. You're safe. Darling, if only there could have been some other way. I'm a mess, aren't I? The Ghana, as they say in the movies. You should have let me die. No. That wouldn't have been right. I mean, it was my duty, my obligation to you. Tina, please. I doubt if you'd have even reached the bomb anyway. Then we'd have both been blown up. Oh, darling, you'll... Oh. Easy now, easy, oh. Tina, easy. Oh. August was right. That bomb would have blown us all the way back to town. Well, if only there was something I could do to... to... It's not too terrible, Sam. Nature provides her own anesthetic. I, I just feel numb all over. It's a kind of poetic justice, I guess. What? Me dying like this. August Merrick will be happy if he's watching me from up there. I'm lost. What are you talking about? I want you to know that... that I love you more than even my own life. Darling, please. And that's why I killed Sue Merrick. So she couldn't steal you away from me. What are you saying? I was crazy with jealousy, Sam. You killed Sue? Charlie, there was nothing to be jealous about. How did you... I don't understand. Her, her apartment door was open and I went in to have a showdown. She called me a, a gold digger and a whole lot of other unpleasant things. Then I killed her. Nobody saw me arrive or leave. But... I, I know that you tried to blame you, Sam, but I guess she'd be... Credit. If you hadn't, I, I would have confessed. Oh. Honestly, please believe that. Yes, darling. Yes, I, I do believe you. I do. This morning, I, I, I was so happy. I, I thought we were in the clear. Oh, Tina, uh, I don't know what to say. Oh. Tina. Tina? She's gone. She's paid the price. What an awful mess. All right, her, people. You can come alongside. Hey, your boat's been burned black. Yes, and all for nothing. was so shattered by his experience that he was unable to face the long journey back alone. He accepted the kind offer of a tow and gently wrapped Tina's body in a borrowed blanket and placed it safely in the cockpit of his launch. On the return journey, he reported to Jim Harmsworth what had happened to Tina, but without mentioning her dying confession. She'd paid for her crime already and in a particularly gruesome manner. Sue was dead, August was dead, and so was his darling Tina. Nothing could be gained by dragging up the whole terrible affair again. 
let sleeping dogs lie. When he came alongside the jetty, Sam moored his boat and wearily climbed the stone steps. Jim Harmsworth was waiting at the top for him. Hey, you look all in, Sam. Sorry about Tina. Yeah, she was a good kid. Brave, too, by all accounts. And that's it, Jim. Brave and impetuous. You know what I'm going to do? Tell me. I'm going to give Tina a nice funeral. Mm. And then I'm going to leave this place forever. I'll keep traveling around this world until the horror is wiped clear from my memory. Could take a long time, Sam. Yes. Probably my lifetime. <laughs> Adventure is produced by Henry Duffenthal.